From 1896 to 1927, there were over 850 films directed by at least 80 women from the United States, France, Germany, Italy, Sweden, the Netherlands, Australia, Chile, Mexico, and the Soviet Union. However, history has not been kind to these directors in terms of preservation or acknowledgement. Previous to 1896, there were only documentaries. Then Alice Guy Blaché directed the first narrative film, La Fille au Chaux. When the pioneers of cinema are mentioned, we hear the names of Georges Méliès, the Lumière brothers, and Thomas A. Edison. Hardly ever do we hear about Alice Guy Blaché. In addition to experimenting with editing in reverse, she produced some of the first sound films in 1905, way before the release of The Jazz Singer in 1927. In 1910, she started making films in America for her own studio, Solax. Why are Guy Blaché's accomplishments never talked about? Is it because she is a woman? Is it because she is French? Lois Weber was the first American female director, and she had a significant output. First, she co-directed films with her husband, Philip Smalley, before stepping out on her own. Some of the controversial issues she addressed included prostitution, abortion, birth control, capital punishment, prejudice, and racism. Her film, Suspense, was filmed as a triptych, three screens conveying different points of view simultaneously. For years, the film was attributed to her husband until she received the credit she deserved. She was elected mayor of Universal City in 1913 and was the highest paid non-actor at Universal in 1916. Ida Mae Park is a prime example of a successful director who has been forgotten. She started acting as a teenager before turning to writing and directing. She was prolific and directed Lon Chaney in three films. In 1920, she created Ida Mae Park Productions. Two of her films, The Risky Road and A Model's Confession, explore the harassment of women in the workplace. She also examines the oppression of women in 1917's Bondage and the working conditions of factory workers in the film Fires of Rebellion. Eugenie Magnus Ingleton ran the scenario department with Eugene B. Lewis at Universal in 1916. Five of the 14 staff writers were women. She directed a short called Avarice with a feature, The Birth of Patriotism, to follow. Moving Picture Weekly called it her first important photo play. Unfortunately, it would also be the last film she directed, despite continuing to write screenplays through the mid-twenties. Marguerite Birch was the head of Vitagraph's Scenario Division. She directed four films, and in 1917, her book, How to Write for Moving Pictures, was published. It included such chapters as The Market Governed by the Public and Stories That Get Across. Frances Marion started out as an assistant to Lois Weber. She first directed a film when given the opportunity by William Randolph Hearst at a salary of $2,000 a week. She has over 150 credits as a screenwriter and published How to Write and Sell Film Stories in 1937. Her main advice to writers was to rise above mediocrity by conquering the areas of motivation, emotion, and dramaturgy. Several well-known actresses branched out into directing. Cleo Madison reportedly refused every director assigned to her, so she would have the chance to be in charge. She told Photoplay, I have seen men with less brains than I have getting away with it, so I knew I could direct if they'd give me the opportunity. Alice Terry starred in films with Ramon Navarro and Rudolph Valentino. She often took over directing for husband Rex Ingram's productions when he became inebriated. However, she received her only credit as co-director during the sound period. Mabel Normand was a comedienne who reportedly was the first person on screen to throw a pie in someone's face. Lillian Gish only directed one feature-length film, entitled Remodeling Her Husband. Unfortunately, footage does not survive. Flamboyant actress Ala Nazimova directed the artist Salome in 1923 and gave the credit to her husband at the time, Charles Bryant. Directing did not have the same respectability then as it does today, and Nazimova did not want to alienate herself from her audience. Evidence shows Ella Hall, Helen Gibson, Nell Shipman, Grace Cunard, and Dot Farley also directed films for which they are not credited. Ruth Ann Baldwin was just one woman who made a western during the silent period. 
Lois Weber, Graves Cunard, Nell Shipman, and Alice Guy Blaché directed westerns as well. Lula Warrington was an actress and director at Universal who featured children in her films until the studio scaled back on kids' films despite positive reviews she received. Madeline Brandis was another director that focused on children in her feature, The Star Prince, in 1918. She also wrote children's books, traveled the world, and included photographs of different countries in her stories. Starting out as an actress, Canadian-born Nell Shipman became concerned with training animals and treating them with dignity after witnessing the cruel treatment of a bobcat on set. After gaining experience as a writer, she bucked the Hollywood system and directed many of her films out in the wild in Idaho. Her films feature raccoons, owls, eagles, skunks, wildcats, beavers, dogs, deer, wild porcupines, cats, and her own pet bear, Brownie. Kathleen Williams was a serial queen who also worked with elephants, leopards, and lions, and took up aviation as early as 1913. Another aviatrix was Jeannie McPherson. In addition to directing two films, she wrote scenarios for Cecil B. DeMille for over 30 years until her death in 1946. In 1922, Marion Fairfax's The Lying Truth dealt with cocaine addiction. It was the only film she would ever direct despite continuing to write scenarios and magazine columns. Dorothy Davenport Reed was inspired to make an anti-drug film a year later when drug addiction claimed the life of her husband, Wallace Reed, a popular actor. An important figure throughout the 20s, she followed Human Wreckage with The Red Kimono, a film about a girl forced into prostitution. Although essentially directing her first two films, she never received on-screen credit until 1929 when she made Linda, Julia Crawford Ivers wrote scenarios for director William Desmond Taylor, whose infamous murder in 1922 scandalized Hollywood. After his death, Ivers went to Hawaii to direct Betty Compson in The White Flower, now considered a lost film. Dorothy Arzner started out as a film editor and writer and successfully transitioned from silent films to talkies during a turbulent time in Hollywood. In Get Your Man, she directed a young Clara Bow. The Arzner Bow team reunited for The Wild Party in 1929, this time a talking picture. Germaine Dulac was part of the first avant-garde movement in France. She aspired to what she called the pure film and described it as a visual symphony. The Smiling Madame Boudet is often considered the first feminist film. She experimented with time-lapse photography, silhouettes, the split screen, superimposition, and fast and slow motion effects. She described her abstract cinema as an anticipated ideal of the future and wanted to give more space to feelings and dreams. Elvira Notari directed about 60 features in Naples, Italy and had her own company, Dora Film. Her husband was the cameraman and her son, an actor in many of her films. Sometimes her films were credited to her husband as the name of a woman often did not mean much. A historian referred to her once as Dora, and several reference books leave her out altogether while mentioning her husband and son. Both Elvira Notari and actress Francesca Bertini preceded Italy's neorealism movement, but they filmed in real locations in Naples. Notari often used non-actors, although she trained them at her own acting school. Bertini, in contrast, was a grand diva. However, Bertini gave a naturalistic performance in the film she co-directed, A Santa Spina. It is known as a masterpiece. Tressie Souders wrote, directed, and produced A Woman's Error in 1922. Maria P. Williams produced and directed Flames of Wrath in 1923 for her production company, the Western Film Producing Company and Booking Exchange. Lita Lawrence wrote and directed Motherhood, Life's Greatest Miracle. 21-year-old Chinese-American Marion Wong directed and produced a film in 1916 entitled The Curse of Quan Guan. Because it did not depict Chinese-Americans in a stereotypical manner, it ultimately was not picked up for distribution. Several decades later, two of the eight reels were discovered and the film was added to the National Film Registry. 
Only 10% of the films survive from the very early days of cinema. It was difficult and expensive for the studios to preserve the nitrate films which, at the time, did not contain any foreseeable market value. Cleo Madison directed 17 films. Only two survive. Elsie Jane Wilson directed 10 films. Only one film survives. Marjorie Wilson directed four films. None survive. Several of these women wrote memoirs that were published. Alice Guy Blachet, Nell Shipman, Frances Marion, and Marjorie Wilson. Jean Gontiers were serialized in the magazine Woman's Home Companion. Alan Azimova's were unfinished, and Lois Weber's were stolen. Alice Guy Blachet and Germaine Dulac received the French Legion of Honor. Nazimova, Dorothy Arzner, Lois Weber, Alice Terry, Mabel Normand, Lillian Gish, Ruth Rowland, Kathleen Williams, and Jeannie McPherson were awarded stars on the Hollywood Walk of Fame. The importance of acknowledging these female directors in the silent period is essential. The history books have excluded these visionaries for too long.